Hello, today I would like to introduce this tool from ServiceNow called Performance Analytics and why you should consider it for your processes. But first, I would like to introduce myself a little bit. So, my name is Eren Munoz. I am a solution architect at Volteo Digital. Now, so over these last seven years working on the Now platform, I had the experience of helping companies improve in their processes and how to measure their continual improvement. I also had the chance to be a certified technical architect and I am mostly specialized in analytics and reporting. So for those of you who are considering how to improve the way that your business works, now this video will be for you. What you will learn is the importance of analytics in your organization, how ServiceNow's performance analytics works and how to get started. First, now there is a need for data that is inside of your platform to be used by multiple types of people. This can include the executives who mostly care about the high level objectives. Are we or are we not tracking against uh, whatever goals we have set for this quarter or this year or any other period? They usually don't require that much detail. But if you can just simply show them as analytics, whether or not we're in good shape or bad shape, uh, that's all that they need. The other side is a service owner, so they mostly would want to know whatever they manage, how can they impact the trends against cost and quality. So there's usually a balancing act between whether we want to spend extra on improving our process versus the payoff that we can get. So it's much easier to have a discussion on where we can allocate resources when we know what is the impact that we can expect. We also have the end user of, or the point of view of a frontline worker. So what they usually care about is how they can do their work more efficiently. So it's better to give them the targets that we're using to measure their performance and provide real time view for what, how they have behaved and what, what work they can do next. Then we have the end user perspective. So these are the people who submit the incidents, the requests, the cases that we work on. And they would want to know what is the status and the quality on how we provide the services that they request. Now, mostly uh, they, they just want to know whether we're meeting the organizational or the service level agreements that were set up. So each of them usually has their own level of detail, their own records that they care about. But thinking about on the high level as an organization, maybe the objective is to provide a continual service improvement, which one can be achieved in two ways. One of them is to increase the quality, or basically the customer satisfaction. The other one is to decrease the cost. So each of them can be measured using different indicators, metrics like how to reduce the mean time to resolve tickets, uh, the first time, whether we are assigning to the correct people and avoiding exchanging interactions too much or lasting too long for the incidents to be reopened or how long it takes us to resolve them. So that is the focus on an increase. The higher the number, the better. But we also can think of indicators where we want to have a lower amount to decrease uh, the cost. For example, uh, the number of tiers that are involved, since usually the first people that answer the phone, uh, we won't want them to escalate to a higher level support. Also, the point of view of the intermediate request fulfillment. How many times have we deflected having to actively work on cases through phone or chat or other interactive media by allowing self-service and automation so end users can help themselves? So that is where reporting analytics come in, although there is a difference. Reporting, which comes in every instance, and it's relatively simple to set up, only tells you the current view, the current picture. It can tell you, for example, that today, the CSAT, the satisfaction score, which usually goes between zero and five, is at a level of around three or 3.5. Okay, so uh, how is that an improvement or a degradation? In order to understand that, you need to give the data more context. So what performance analytics helps you with is to have a daily snapshot of how your data is trending over time. While reporting only tells you the current values, performance analytics always gives the history on how we were trending over the last few, few days or weeks or months. 
Now, it's not enough just to know that we have around three as a score, but is that meeting the objective or not? So is that good news or bad news? If we notice that we are not quite level at uh, the level that we expect or that we want to achieve, uh, we can go ahead and, and have a sort of a prediction how fast we can achieve that value. For example, if um, with the historical trend, by measuring the things that have already happened, we can answer questions like, where did we come from? And if we improved or not. So maybe we're in good shape, but we're not quite where we want to be and where we are right now. The other thing is, where do we want to be? That is usually set by a higher level uh, sort of uh, measurements, or I should say, by targets. But um, these are examples of what is descriptive reporting. It only shows you what has already happened in the past. What usually we need in order to make decisions and take actions is to have a prediction on how we are shaping up in the future. For example, uh, understanding what is the gap between our current values and where, uh, what do we need to achieve that value faster. Uh, in this example, getting to a four as a CSAT. And then uh, that is an example of prescriptive, in, uh, prescriptive reporting. Well, answering the question, when will we get there is a prediction, a forecast. Now, the way that performance analytics works, your instance used by people working through tickets, submitting things, approving uh, whatever is performed the instance, they generate a wealth of information, a lot of data, but in order to turn it into actionable data, you will need to give it a bit more context. That is where the daily data collection comes in. So what perf performance analytics basically does is it goes through all the tables that you care about and takes measurements for things like how long our records last open or how many times they have been reassigned, uh, what is the average call resolution and so on. So once you have all of those sources identified, like if you want to measure open or resolve or, or the closed incidents on a given day, you will turn that into actual indicators. Sometimes these are known as KPIs. And what they help you with is to make sure that your data has some sort of a meaning to uh, the people that need to look at the reporting. You can show all of this information, which um, either gives you the total score or you can use what is called a breakdown. Since it's not the same thing to say that we have only 100 incidents open, but how many of those are assigned to a certain assignment groups or belong to a certain category? That by itself, the breakdown can provide a lot of the information. That is considered the data layer and what usually a performance analytics administrator will set up. But what your end users will care about is the visualization, the final results. That is where the performance analytics widgets instead of dashboards will provide your stakeholders with the visualizations that they need. And this is what we call the visualization layer. Well, uh, that is a bit of how the importance of performance analytics and how it works in the background. Now I will just show you a quick demo on how you can get started. So over here, I find myself in an instance and what you will notice when you get started with performance analytics is there could be some pre-configured dashboards with a lot of widgets. The thing is they may be empty, like in this example. Let's say that I, I'm only using the complementary version of ServiceNow which provides some KPIs for incident management. So you don't have to start from scratch. There is already a lot of pre-configured indicators service makes. You will just have to do one additional step. Once you notice that your dashboard is empty, what you usually have to do is go to your instance and enable the data collection jobs. Data collector jobs. 
There may be two examples, daily data collection and historical data collection. You will want to enable daily data, daily data collection so that you can make use of a measurement in the future. So you want to enable this. But in order to get data right away, you can also execute what is called a historical data collection. For example, we can execute this for the last 60 days on demand. What gets collected? It's determined by a list that is found on the bottom of your scheduled data collection. So what I can simply do is execute it. You could even at this point notice how your data collection is working by refreshing your list. This should take one to two minutes in this example. So right now, I'll just wait for this to be finished. Okay, so it was less than two minutes. Well, uh, after that is collected, I can go back to the same dashboard from before. Now, this contains the information that shows you the historical trend of your KPIs. So uh, there are multiple visualizations. This is an example of a time series. They changes over time. A list of indicators, a breakdown showing you not only the total new incidents, but which ones are critical or which ones are high or moderate priority. And a pie chart, or I should say a donut chart uh, of the breakdown of the new incidents by priority. So uh, all of this data is not just uh, an image. You can actually click in any of these data points, which will take you to the visualization that is called Analytics Hub. So it is in the Analytics Hub where your stakeholders can go ahead and do a further analysis. For example, looking at the breakdowns. So out of the total 223 open incidents on December 3rd, how many were priority four or priorities uh, five, three, two, or one. The other thing is enabling the uh, prediction, the forecast, enabling the, the labels to give the data a bit of a better visualization, the confidence and trend bands to notice the slope in the visualization that we have at the moment. You can even go back in history and look at the records that match this description, how many were open on any given day in the past. So that's just a bit of what your end users can do once they start using performance analytics. So that was a brief demo on how you can consider using performance analytics to improve your data visualizations for your process owners, executives, your frontline workers or end users. If this sounds interesting to you, I encourage you to go ahead and look at more information in the documentation or reach out to us. The links in the description can be used to reach out to us. So thank you very much and have a nice day.